These are some thoughts of mine on Pothole at 54's video, Human Ancestry Made Easy. It is a video that, when subjected to logical analysis, seems to me to raise as many questions as answers. This video from Atikana was nominated by someone for a golden crocodile. Unfortunately, it doesn't qualify, because Atikana doesn't breach the Ninth Commandment here. He's just a bit confused about one of my videos, and is asking a couple of questions about it. Well, thanks for the sentiment, Atikana, but I assure you I'm not losing my grip. Not as far as I know. But since this is such a popular question, I'll be happy to explain it in a video. Maybe listeners with keen hearing will be able to spot the initial source of confusion. According to Pothole of 54, the first female ancestor, common to all mankind, lived about 150,000 years ago. My last video, Human Evolution Made Easy, showed how mitochondrial DNA can be used to trace our most recent common matrilineal female ancestor. The first female ancestor common to all mankind. Our most recent common matrilineal female ancestor. Yes, you're all too sharp for me. Atikana is talking about the first female ancestor common to all mankind, but I was talking about our most recent common matrilineal female ancestor. The first female ancestor common to all mankind would probably have been a fish, or some recognizably female organism in the Cambrian. Our most recent common matrilineal female ancestor was a woman who lived about 150,000 years ago. Big difference. The rest of Atikana's confused video is all based on this complete misunderstanding of that crucial difference. But we'll have a listen anyway. But in that case, why was the mother of this woman not also our common ancestor? What was so different about the daughter that qualified her to be the mother of us all, in contrast to her own mother. And if she was indeed the mother of us all, then why was her own father not the father of us all? Well, of course he was. So was her mother. So were her grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents. We have millions of common ancestors. But only one of them is our most recent common matrilineal female ancestor. Exactly what definition of being truly human is Pothole of 54 using? I say, steady on. The video then goes on to assert that the first male common ancestor lived about 60,000 years ago. But the same can be done for markers on the Y chromosome, which are only passed from father to son. Again, I hope you can spot the difference between what I said and what Atikana thinks I said. He's talking again about a fish, our first common male ancestor, and I'm talking about a man, our most recent common patrilineal male ancestor. I gave an explanation of what matrilineal and patrilineal means in the video, which Atikana probably missed. And patrilineal ancestry through Y-chromosome DNA gives much more accurate dates because there's no mixing of genes. So any mutations that occur have come about naturally, and since these happen with a fair degree of regularity, our most recent common ancestors derived through this method can be fairly accurately dated. But Atikana brings up another point that's been put to me by others. Why was our most recent common patrilineal ancestor much more recent than our most recent common matrilineal ancestor? Well, hang your heads in shame, guys, because it all comes down to the fact that men are much more promiscuous than women. Take Elvis Presley, for example. He married Priscilla and they had one daughter, Lisa Marie. And if they'd had a couple of sons, all the Presley children could trace their matrilineal and patrilineal ancestry back to the same contemporaneous couple. But sadly, Elvis wasn't faithful. He had a mistress. OK, maybe two mistresses. Yes, all right. No, that's enough. OK, OK, we've run out of space. And some of the mistresses bore Elvis's illegitimate children. And then those children got married and had children who would be Elvis's grandchildren. Meanwhile, Lisa Marie married Michael Jackson, and they had... 
Okay, let's just stick with Elvis. Now, all the male children shared a most recent common patrilineal ancestor, Elvis Presley. But Elvis's daughters and granddaughters need to go a lot further back to trace their most recent common matrilineal ancestor because they all had different mothers. And since none, or maybe few, of the mothers were related, they could have had Polish, Dutch, and Italian ancestry. So a most recent common matrilineal ancestor could have been a Stone Age woman who migrated across the Middle East tens of thousands of years ago. So, ladies, if you ever suspected that men are lying, cheating, fornicating scumbags, well, you now have 150,000 years of genetic history to support your case. Ah, you all say, but the most recent common female ancestor of all those Presley children would surely be Elvis's mother. Yes, but that's not a matrilineal ancestor, because it's not going through the female line. As I said, the reason we use patrilineal and matrilineal ancestry is because it's easier to date. It's almost certain we have more recent male and female ancestors, it's just that they can't be accurately dated. If you didn't get the Elvis example, here's another one. Take British comedian Ronnie Corbett. He's happily married to actress Anne Hart and has two daughters, but if by chance he had fathered a secret love child, then more people would be able to trace their ancestry to Ronnie than to Anne. Atacana's misunderstanding now leads him into a strange twilight zone of human history. So where does this leave all the people in between the first supposed female ancestor and the first supposed male ancestor? If the first female common ancestor was in the past, but the first male common ancestor was yet to come, then who or what exactly were the people in between? Were they some kind of not quite human hybrid with the true yin of us, but not the true yang? Look, Hatikana, our ancestors had yin and yang coming out the yin yang. They weren't deformed mutants descended from a female ancestor and hopelessly confused as they awaited the arrival of their male ancestor. They were just as human as Priscilla Presley's parents and grandparents. We're not related to every human who's ever lived, but that doesn't mean we're any less human. I obviously could have done a much better job of explaining all this, so I do take a lot of the blame for the fact that Atikana and others found it confusing. But if there's something you don't get, do go back over the video and check the wording of what I said, because I usually say things for a certain reason. And if something doesn't make sense, by all means write and ask. I'll be more than happy to explain it or to point out a mistake and correct it if I'm wrong. Secondly, nothing in any of my videos is my theory. Everything is based on research done by people with far greater expertise than me, and I always cite the source. So it's not my assertion that these male and female ancestors lived at these particular times. This comes from Spencer Davis's research that I cited in the video. Of course, if I've misquoted or misrepresented the source, then I do want to know about it, so message me and I'll be happy to correct it.